Um, uh, Miguel, lead us off. Go ahead. Hi, Sam. Um, um, you create 392 yards of rushing offense against Virginia Tech. Uh, against Virginia, knowing that Georgia Tech allows more rushing yards than passing, uh, than passing yards, are you expecting to have a similar or even better production against them? Yeah, I mean, honestly, going into the game, I, you really don't know um, how it's going to play out. You know, all those plays are always in the game plan every week. And, you know, just by the flow of the game, sometimes I run a little bit more. Um, so you really don't know on a week-to-week -week basis. You just kind of got to see how the flow of the game is going. C.L. Brown, go ahead. Hey, Sam. Um, Josh Downs had mentioned before that that you guys kind of knew each other before uh, you got to Chapel Hill. I, I was wondering if, if you if you even remember, like, can you take me through what what was your first impression of him of, of, of you know, first being in a camp situation working with him? Yeah, no, every every single time I'll see Josh at a camp or seven on seven term or whatever it was, I was super impressed. Um, he, obviously I've known Dre for a long time, so therefore I knew Josh, um, and Josh, every single time I saw him, I always knew I wanted to play with him one day. Um, I didn't think we'd get the chance to get him, but, you know, I'm just super glad he's here. He's a, he's a phenomenal player for us and he's only going to get better. Um, you know, he, he works so hard and, you know, I, dude, I can't say enough about him. And is there, is there, I don't know if it's a number or, or what, but, is there an amount, a certain amount of time that you feel like you have to spend with the receiver before you feel like you guys have, you know, have the connection, you're making the same kind of reads and everything like that? Like, is, is there is some kind of feel to that or does it just kind of happen organically and you'll be in a game situation and you'll know that this is when, you know, this is when it clicked? Yeah, no, I think it's different for every receiver. Uh, it's probably easier with some than others, but no, nah, especially like, especially with a guy like Josh, uh, he's so good in space, and you know he likes to do a little, a little, some extra stuff sometimes to to get himself open um, a little bit more. So definitely, just getting that timing down with Josh was super important. And you know, really with all our receivers, you know, we throw we have throwing sessions all the time with all the quarterbacks, all the receivers throughout the offseason. And you know, we really when we have those sessions, we try to take advantage of. Uh, we're not we're not just out there throwing the ball around. We're actually working on specific things, trying to get timing down and working on different scenarios and stuff like that. Thank you. Greg Barnes. Hey, Sam. Uh, Georgia Tech has had some success defending the, the pass this year. Uh, I'm just curious, what are they doing well and, and kind of what's the challenge that they, they present? Yeah, they're doing a really good job on defense. Uh, you know, you can tell they're well coached and, and they play hard, they're physical. Um, and I think that's probably the main thing you notice on film is how hard those guys play. And you know, especially when you watch the Clemson game, it was super impressive um, to see that performance there on the defense side of the ball. And, you know, and they create turnovers as well. So we got to do a good job taking care of the football. And you know, they, they, they've done a really good job. Uh, you know, they mix up their looks to do a couple of different things. And you know, I think from top to bottom on defense, they're, they have some really good players. So we definitely got a, a really good week of practice to, to have a good game on Saturday. Art Chansky, go ahead. All right, we'll try to get back to Art in a minute. Andrew Jones, go ahead. Hey, Sam, you know, you've targeted the tight ends quite a bit the last two weeks, certainly more than what we had seen previously. Um, could you kind of talk about how that actually helps the pass game when teams have to be more aware of the tight end dragging over the middle? In fact, you hit Garrett one time uh, on a touchdown pass and Kamari a few times last week. How does that make you guys better and more difficult to defend? Yeah, no, I mean, it just makes it hard for the defense. It's another guy they have to account for. I think um, the first two years, we, we didn't get the ball to the tight end near as much as we should have. Um, and it just makes it so much harder to defend. Uh, you know, we have – with Garrett and Kamar, we, we have two weapons at tight end that, you know, we need to take advantage of. Um, so we definitely want to try to use those guys a little bit more. And we can still use them more than, than what we've been using them. Um, so and that's something Coach Long was trying to do too. He's trying to push the ball to those guys a little bit because you know, they've done a really good job for us. And when, when we get the ball to them, they're productive. Um, so that's just something we, we, we could always do a better job taking advantage of is having those two guys at tight end. 
Garrett has talked about one of the reasons he came back, aside from the success you guys could have as a team, is that he wants to be drafted. He wanted to get better. He wanted to position himself for the next level. How have you seen him change to where maybe he has better positioned himself to achieve that goal? Yeah, no, I think Garrett's come a long way. He's gotten a lot better over the years. Um, I think the main thing I've probably seen that's different with Garrett this year, just his mentality and his mindset. Um, you know, he kind of he came in this year with a professional mentality um, and he and he worked so hard. He's always worked hard since he's been here. But I think this year he just does a little bit more. Um, he he works. He works so hard. And, you know, he's a, he's a leader. Um, he speaks up when, when things need to be said this year, which is something that we didn't see from him um, the past couple of years. So I just think he's overall just a more mature player. Um, I mean, he's still a selfless guy. Obviously, he wants the ball, but he does a really good job in the run game. Um, he loves blocking. Um, and you know, he's just a really good weapon for us, and we need to we need to make sure we're using him. Cool. Thank you. Hey, over to Adam Smith. Hey, Sam. Um, wanted to ask you about. I'm sure you've seen the stat about uh, Power Five quarterbacks who have run for three, one, run for a hundred, and thrown for three hundred in back to back games, and uh, it's two guys, you and Lamar Jackson, in the last fifteen years. Um, you know, when you see that, when you see your name with Lamar in that context, does that is that a further like a uh, wow type of thing? Like, man, this you know what's happened the last couple of games is kind of a special deal. Does that sort of you know make it that much more exciting or surprising? No, nah, I mean it, it is pretty cool just to, to be for my running game is tied into uh, the name of Lamar Jackson. I um, mean, I think I kind of got lucky there that I had back to back games. It's not it's certainly not. Something that I do every week, run for 100 yards, but not it is it is a cool deal, and it's just credit to to Coach Longo and the stuff he's, he's scheming up in our old line. They're doing they've done an incredible job these past two weeks. So and if we keep that going, it's it's going to be hard to stop us. Yeah, I would say so. Um, the 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 ball to Josh Downs that he laid out and caught in the back of the end zone the other night against UVA. Um, did you think you had overthrown him? Because you know, just watching it live. It kind of looked like he might not get there, and then all of a sudden he got there. Yeah, I mean, I, it felt pretty good coming out. I mean, it, it was – I did overthrow him a little bit, and he and he made up for it, made a great catch. Um, but, you know, I just didn't want to – I didn't want to underthrow him. Um, but, yeah, and no, I did I did overthrow him by a little bit. Um, but he made up for it, and that's what great players do. Cool, man. Thank you. JB Ricks, go ahead. Hey, Sam, appreciate you taking out the time. Um, you guys have back-to-back -back games where you scored 59 points. Uh, what, what's going to be the key for you guys not to have a drop-off, keep that rhythm going uh, when you guys get down to Atlanta this weekend? Yeah, I mean, we just try to do our job every single play, and I think, you know, we just got to stay within ourselves on offense and never try to do too much. I think when we try to do too much, that's when we get in trouble. Um, and really just have a really good week of practice. I think that's something from the offensive side that's really important for us to have success on Saturday is have a really good week of practice and preparation and make sure we know everything the defense is going to try to do to us when we go out there on the field on Saturday. And our, and our coaching staff does a really good job of making sure all our positions on offense are prepared on Saturday. And I think, you know, we need to make, make sure we're doing the same process every single week um, and never get complacent, never, never get the feeling of we're just going to go out there and score 60 points a game because, uh, you know, it, it's not that easy. Um, there's a lot that goes into it to, to have that kind of success on Saturday. So as long as we just stick to the process and just trust our preparation, we'll be all right. That's perfect. Thank you, man. All right, let's try Art Chansky again. Art, you out there? I'm thinking not. So, Sam, I think we're done with you, brother. Appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you guys.